Three years ago, I created the GOAT Index, which showed mathematically that Cristiano Ronaldo was the greatest player of all time. Now it's time to see who is gonna take the crown. I'm Dr. Tom Crawford, and this is the GOAT Index 2.0. In the first GOAT Index, I created a top 10 shortlist featuring players throughout history that had won at least two Ballon d'Ors. Today, I'm looking at the current generation of players who must be under the age of 25 and using some mathematical modeling to try to predict who is most likely to take the title of the GOAT. The initial shortlist this time was much longer, but eventually I was able to narrow it down to a top 10. And for most of these players, this meant that they had won a lot of titles very early in their career, or they had won an individual award such as the Copper Trophy. So now let's reveal the top 10. In 10th place, we have Pedri. Pedri follows the Messi curve, having spent all of his career at Barcelona, and he scores very highly on the individual awards section, having won the Copper Trophy in 2021. In joint eighth, we have Arda Goulet, who follows the Ronaldo curve. His score is significantly boosted by Real Madrid's season 23-24, where they won the La Liga and the Champions League. And interestingly, Goulet actually has a very large spread of numbers, and this is due to few data points available, as he's only been playing for two or three seasons. Also in eighth place, we have Phil Foden. His career follows the Messi curve, and he scores very highly on the club titles category, having of course spent his whole career at Manchester City, who have been very successful in recent years. In seventh, we have our second Real Madrid player, Rodrigo. His career follows the Ronaldo curve, and he also scores highly on the club titles category. In sixth place, we have Vinicius Jr., whose career follows the Messi curve. He scores very highly on club titles, like his Real Madrid teammates, but he also scores well on assists and goals. In fifth place, we come to Lamine Yamal. His career so far is of course very short, but it is following the Messi curve. He is scoring very highly on the international category, having recently won the Euros, and he also scores quite well across club titles, goals and assists. However, he has a very low score on individual awards. In fourth place, we have Erling Haaland. His career follows the Ronaldo curve. He scores very highly on goals, as expected and also has pretty good scores across the board, apart from international titles. We now come to our top three. In third, we have Jude Bellingham. His career follows the Ronaldo curve with a real upturn in his points scoring since his transfer to Real Madrid last season. He also scores pretty well across most of the categories, in particular the individual awards, having won the Copper Trophy in 2023. However, he of course is let down by the international trophies and England's performance. Our runner-up might come as a little bit of a surprise. It's Julian Alvarez. His career follows the Ronaldo curve and he scores incredibly highly in both international titles and club titles, as well as respectable scores in goals and assists. So that means our winner in first place is Kylian Mbappe. His career follows the Messi curve with consistent scores across all of the seasons he's been playing. He obviously scores very highly on both goals and assists. He's also won a lot of league titles with PSG, World Cup with France, and also scores highly on individual awards, having been awarded the Copper Trophy in 2018. So there you have it, the top 10 as I try to predict the next GOAT. Stage one follows the blueprint of the first GOAT index where players are scored on a number of categories. And then stage two is where the mathematical modeling is used to predict their future performance using something called the GOAT curve. Players are scored across five categories. The first one is goals. And for every goal the player has scored, whether that is for their club team or their international team, they are awarded one point. The second category is assists, and each assist is awarded half a point. The third category is club titles, 
and there's a little bit more to unpack here. So a domestic league title, the player is awarded the number of points equivalent to the UEFA coefficient for that particular season in that country. For a domestic cup, they will be awarded half of the UEFA coefficient for that season in that country. For the Champions League, I have taken the top two UEFA coefficients for the leagues across Europe and added those together to give the points total. Then there are two final trophies. There is the Club World Cup, which is a flat score of 20 points. And the Copa Libertadores in South America is a flat score of 30 points. And all of these are added together to give the final score for club titles in category three. Category four is international titles. A World Cup is the most valuable competition. And so the base score is 150. And then I subtract 150 divided by the country's seeding plus one. So this means more points are awarded to countries who are surprise winners of the trophy. The European Championship and the Copa America are deemed to be of equivalent value. And each of those start from a base number of 100 and then are scored in the same way with the same seeding as for the World Cup. The points total for all international titles is actually multiplied by three when added to the GOAT index score for that player. This is to ensure that a World Cup, for example, is approximately twice as valuable as a Champions League title. The final category is the individual titles, and here players are awarded points for a Ballon d'Or or winning the Copper Trophy, which is awarded to the best young player in the world each year. The scores here are based on the proportion of votes that each player obtains. So a player who receives most of the votes will therefore receive more points for winning that particular year. The score here is then multiplied by five before being added to the total so that winning one of these individual awards is somewhere between a Champions League title and a World Cup. Now for stage two, I'm going to use a tool called the GOAT curve to try and take what I know about each of these players and predict what their performance might be for the remainder of their careers. I'm going to try and predict the future using mathematical modeling. Since I'm trying to predict the career path of a future GOAT, I'm going to use the current GOATs, Ronaldo and Messi, as examples. So this means there are two possible GOAT curves. The Ronaldo GOAT curve would typically have an S shape where the points scored at the beginning of the player's career are relatively small before possibly a transfer to a larger, more successful team where there is then a period of acceleration, where there is much faster points scoring, and then towards the end, possibly slowing down a little bit. And this gives this elongated S shape, which mathematically is called a sigmoidal curve. For the messy goat curve, the scoring of points is pretty consistent across each season. So this is likely because the player has always played for a big or successful team and is scoring points each season at an approximately constant rate. So this one will look like a straight line. Since I'm trying to predict the future, rather than giving a specific fixed number, I'm going to actually use something called a confidence interval, which gives a prediction of a lower bound or a minimum score for a player and a maximum score or upper bound for that player. So each player will have a range of possible scores that they could obtain on the GOAT index. And then we will take the average of those two numbers as their final score for the top 10 list. One of the big surprises is, of course, Julian Alvarez coming in second. Not a name you might have initially thought about. However, if you look more closely at his career to date and his statistics, he's actually won everything. In that season, he won the World Cup with Argentina, as well as the treble with Manchester City, which is why he scores so highly. The other interesting point from a mathematical perspective is the range of values for each player. So for those players that have several seasons of data, the range is actually quite narrow. And so I can be 
relatively certain of their potential future score, but for the really young players, such as Lamine Yamal and Arda Goulet, their range is actually really quite large. So they could very easily end up at the top of the list, but also they could end up at the bottom or even out of the top 10 altogether. We simply do not at the moment have enough data to make a really concrete prediction. Whilst it's perhaps not that surprising to see Kylian Mbappe come out on top, as he's often talked about as the heir apparent to the title of the GOAT, we can now say that it is backed up by some solid maths and the GOAT algorithm. This has been the GOAT Index 2.0.